Well, hello everyone. We're back with another Frightful Fridays today. I'm super excited. Um, keeping these going and keeping on the trend of spookiness. I'm really excited to be doing another installment of Frightful Fridays today. Um, before we get started, I do just want to let you know that they are doing some like seriously loud construction on my balcony. Um, and I'm on the other side of my condo, but you can still hear it so loudly. There's so much just noise. So I'm trying to film just in between um, the noise as best as I can to get this video up for you guys. But just so you know, that is going on outside. So it's been very loud. So if you hear anything in the back background, I do apologize. I really hope you won't be able to hear anything, but you might um, from time to time just because they keep like starting and stopping and making noise and then it's quiet for a while. So I, it, you just can't really gauge when it's gonna be a good time to do this, but I really wanna get some videos up for you guys. I'm super motivated to um, keep doing this. I love doing this. And so, yeah, I just really hope that doesn't bother you. And I wanted to apologize for that. Um, but other than that, I think we're just gonna go ahead and get on into it. Yeah, let's just get started. So today's Frightful Fridays topic is going to be the Midnight Game. Um, so we talked about the Elevator Game last week and we've talked about Bloody Mary. So we've done a few different of these kind of creepy ritualistic type games. Um, and I just wanna give a disclaimer that I do not recommend that you perform this ritual or do this game or any of the other games or spooky things that we talk about. Um, in this series, I do not recommend that you do any of it. Please do not try any of these things. It can be very dangerous. You can hurt yourself or others. So please um, do not try any of these things that we discuss. This is all purely for fun and for entertainment and just to kind of get a little spooked and learn something new. So yes, please do not do any of these things that we are going to discuss. And now we are going to actually get into what is called the Midnight Game. Now, from what I saw, there was a movie made about this game, I think in 2013. Um, I haven't seen this movie. I saw that it was on IMDb. I'm not sure if it was an independent film or not, um, but there was a movie made about this game and it described it as like a horror thriller type movie. So there is that. I don't know if you wanna check it out or not, but um, I did find that little bit of pop culture information on this movie, which I thought was, a, or on this topic, which I thought was a little bit interesting. So it was thought for a long time and many people have believed and maybe still do believe um, to this day that the Midnight Game actually started as an old pagan ritual. It was done hundreds of years ago, um, but I have seen other reports and accounts as well that have said that this game actually started out as a creepypasta on the internet around 2009-ish and that it hasn't actually been a, a ritual for hundreds of years. Um, so depending on what you believe there, but a lot of people do just say it was a creepypasta that kind of gained popularity and a lot of people started doing to spook themselves and to see if they would end up seeing the Midnight Man, which is who you are summoning when you perform this ritual. So a couple different um, accounts of how this originated there, but like I said, the more popular one is that it was a creepypasta. Oh my gosh, the noise. Now the game has really gained a lot of popularity in recent years um, and it's thought that this is mainly because you can do this game or this ritual in your home and you need very few supplies and all of the supplies that you need you probably already have in your home. So a lot of people credit the easiness I guess of this ritual and performing it um, to why it has gotten so popular and why um, it's kind of spread across the internet and many, many people have tried it and there's a lot more accounts um, recently than there used to be when this creepypasta first came out. So for this midnight game, the materials that you are going to want to have ready are as follows. You will need one candle and you will need a lighter or a book of matches to light the candle with. You will need a piece of paper, um, just any type of paper and a writing utensil. So um, a pen or a pencil, just something that you can write with. You will need a pin, um, the like a sewing type of pin. You will need a wooden door. You will need salt, and you will also need a drop of your own blood, at least one drop. Now, this game can be played alone or it can be played with multiple people, so you can do this with your friends or whatever, um, but if you are doing it with multiple people, each person does need their own set of supplies for themselves, so um, make sure that everyone has their own supplies. And that's really it. Once you have all of these supplies and you're in your home or let's say your friend's home or whatever building you're in, you can begin the ritual. Now to start, you're going to wanna to take that pen or pencil that you have handy and you are going to write your full name, so your first name, middle name if you have one, and your last name on the piece of paper. 
And then once you have written your name, you're actually gonna take that sewing pin and prick your finger until you draw some blood. And you need to place at least one drop of your own blood on the paper that you have also written your full name on. Um, and then once you place that drop of blood, at least one drop on the paper, you need to let that soak all the way into the piece of paper. Now that you have completed these steps, the next step is to turn off every single light in your home. Not a single light need, can be on. It needs to be totally and completely dark and all lights in the home need to be off. Now that you've completed all of these steps, you're gonna take that piece of paper that has your name and your blood on it, and you're going to, I'm so sorry if you can hear the noise, oh my gosh, um, but you're gonna take that piece of paper and you're gonna place it in front of the wooden door. Now the door needs to be closed. So whatever side of the door you're on, you place the paper directly in front of that door. And now that you've placed the paper there, you wanna take the candle that you have handy and you wanna light it and place the candle on top of the piece of paper. If you're using like just a stick candle, make sure you have a candle holder obviously, but you just light the candle and stick it right on the paper that should be in front of the wooden door. Next, after you've lit the candle, you are going to knock on the wooden door 22 times exactly. Now the key to this is that your final knock has to occur right at midnight. So 12 o'clock on the dot, after you've knocked 21 times, the 22nd and final knock must be at midnight. This is crucial to ensure that this ritual goes properly and that the midnight man ends up showing up and we'll get to him in just a minute. Once you have knocked those 22 times with the final knock being at midnight, you are then supposed to open the door blow out the candle and then close the door immediately. So open, close, simple, right? Once you do this, you have officially allowed the midnight man to enter your home. You have invited him into the space that you are doing this ritual in. Once you have invited him in, you need to immediately light your candle again. A common theme in this ritual is to always make sure you have your lighter or your matches ready, um, not only for this step, but for further steps in the ritual as well, which we're about to get into. So now that you have invited him in and you relit your candle, the game um, has officially begun, so to speak, um, and the midnight man has been invited. So what do you do from here? You need to gather your candle and your um, lighter as well as salt and you need to begin the game immediately. Make sure you keep your lighter close to you and your salt close to you at all times and make sure you're always carrying your candle with you throughout the duration of this game. Now you are supposed to wander around your home. Now remember your building or your home that you're doing this in is supposed to be completely dark still, no lights on. Do not turn on any lights for the duration of this game and you are supposed to begin wandering around your home. Your goal throughout this game is to avoid the midnight man until 3.33 a.m. The reason you are supposed to keep moving is because if you stand still, they say it's easier, people who have done this say it's easier for the midnight man to find you, and the point is to keep moving so that you're never in one place for too long and he can't essentially catch you. And remember, while you are doing this, you are supposed to be carrying your candle the entire time, making sure that it's lit. If your candle goes out, it means the midnight man is near you. This is where carrying your lighter or your book of matches um, becomes essential because you only have 10 seconds from the point that your candle goes out to relight it. Um, you need to relight it within those 10 seconds. It is crucial that you do that. If you are unsuccessful in lighting your candle within the 10 seconds, you need to immediately surround yourself in a circle of salt. So if the this is all happening very fast, obviously, so if your candle goes out and you just can't get it to light within the 10 seconds, you then need to just make sure that you surround yourself in the circle of salt, which is why I said earlier that you need to carry all of these supplies with you throughout the duration of this game. Now, if you are unsuccessful in lighting your candle and get yourself inside the circle of salt, you need to remain inside this salt circle until 3.33 a.m. This time will become a big trend in this game and become very important. So what happens if you're unsuccessful in both lighting your candle as well as getting yourself in a salt circle? This is said to be the very scary and horrific part of this game and why it is so important that you complete these steps so that this thing does not happen to you. So if you are unsuccessful in lighting the candle or getting yourself in the salt circle, there's many accounts that if you are unsuccessful in this, this is when the midnight man will then appear and basically make your worst fears and your worst nightmare a reality. It is said that the midnight man will cause you to hallucinate, hallucinate your worst fears, your worst nightmares, 
Um, a lot of people who have played this game have just accounted for seeing just the most awful and horrific things I'm sure you can imagine. I'm not going to go into great detail on here. Um, but an even scarier scenario is that the Midnight Man will actually come and steal your organs, essentially ripping them out one by one. Of course, this is if you are unsuccessful in lighting the candle and getting yourself in the salt circle, or if you leave the salt circle before 3.33 a.m. Basically, you can just expect the most horrific things to happen to you, whether you hallucinate them or it happens to you for real if you are very unlucky, obviously. Um, so it, that is why so it is so essential to make sure you follow all of these rules correctly and have all of your supplies with you because in those 10 seconds, a lot can go wrong. Allegedly, when this happens, um, you will essentially be able to feel everything the Midnight Man is doing to you, but you will be unable to respond. You will be almost frozen, just frozen in your own pain and your own suffering and not be able to do anything about it. I'm so sorry if you can hear that noise. I know it's probably really annoying. But anyway, so that is obviously worst case scenario if you're unsuccessful in following the rules, completing the steps, getting in the salt circle, whatever, whatever it is. But what happens if you do relight your candle? Um, instead and you have no need for the salt. So if your candle goes out and you are able to relight it within the 10 seconds, it is said that you just need to keep moving around your home. The big theme here is to always keep moving and always make sure that you are wandering around your home because obviously, like I said earlier, if you don't do this, this is when the midnight man can blow out your candle and end up catching you. So just make sure every time that happens, you know if the candle goes out that the midnight man is near, just make sure you light it quick enough and then just keep moving. Just keep on moving, honey. That's all you gotta do, okay? Now you have to keep moving. You must not stop. Um, you have to keep moving until 3.33 a.m. essentially to win the game. And in order to win, like I said, you need to keep moving till 3.33 a.m. and remain unattacked by the Midnight Man. You just need to avoid him at all cost and um, essentially not encounter him and not be attacked by him or remain inside your circle of salt that you created until 3.33. So you're, you're either moving or you're inside the circle of salt or the Midnight Man has caught you. Now, if you are successful in all of this, once 3.33 a.m. hits, you can stop moving, you can leave your salt circle, you can sit down, anything. The game is over and you have essentially won the game if you have avoided the Midnight Man. Um, now, with that being said, you can go about your morning as usual, you can go lay down and go to sleep, you can turn your lights back on in your home. The game at that point is over. Essentially, once 3.33 hits, it is said by a lot of players that the Midnight Man then leaves your home because you have beat the game. Um, allegedly, many people have claimed who have played this game that the Midnight Man essentially never leaves you. They're kind of always haunted by him. They've been visited by him again after the game is over. And many people claim to just expect the Midnight Man to kind of always be in your life from the, that point on, from whenever you play the game. It is thought and said by a lot of people that they feel like they're being watched by him a lot or that they're never truly alone, even when they're alone in their home or anywhere else. So just know that and know that with caution, I guess, that even though you've won the Midnight Game, if you've won it, um, the Midnight Man kind of always remains with you from then, from that point on, um, just according to accounts of people who have allegedly performed this ritual. Now, while you're playing the game, you can definitely know that the Midnight Man is near or experience him and feel him um, being near you without him actually being, without him actually attacking you. And many people who have um, claimed to play this game and perform this ritual have reported feeling a sudden drop in temperature. That's a big one. The room gets really cold um, when the Midnight Man is near. And many people have reported um, that when you feel something like that, you need to leave the area and move on to another part of your house. Many people have actually reported seeing like an all black human humanoid-like figure in different corners or sections of their home and interpreting that as the Midnight Man. A lot of people have also reported hearing soft whispering and then of course the candle going out and like all of these are major signs and the most popular signs that I found that the Midnight Man is near. So if you are playing this game, which I don't advise, but if you choose to and you feel one of these things happen, you can assume that the Midnight Man is near and people who have played this have said to immediately leave the area if you start to feel those feelings. Now, if you want to end this game, if you've started it, if you've, um, you know, started the ritual, 
and you get freaked out and you want to end it, um, you better just keep on moving because there is actually no known way that I found to end the game. There's no way to stop the ritual once it's begun besides, you know, completing it at 3.33 a.m. So good luck with that. That's why I say I don't advise this and make sure you're really sure if you want to do something like this. But there's nothing that I could find on how to end the game once you've already started it. Now, some other rules in this game that I think I kind of forgot to mention earlier, or maybe I did, um, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you some of the other rules because it is important that you follow them to a T in this game. Um, the first rule is obviously it has to be completely dark, so no flashlights, no phone lights, nothing like that. Um, things that might seem really obvious you might not think about, so um, things like your phone or a flashlight. You can't have any type of light at all. You cannot go to sleep during the game. You must stay awake for the whole game. Um, it is also very important that you do use a candle um, as your only light source. So you cannot use a lighter in place of a candle. You need to have an actual candle. Um, you can obviously use the lighter to light the candle, but your actual light source has to be the candle. You cannot use anyone else's blood during the game. It must be your own blood when you're performing the ritual yourself. Um, like I said, if multiple people are playing, they need their own supplies and their own blood. Obviously, you can't use someone else's in place of your own. You also cannot leave your home or the building that you are playing this in for the remainder of the game, for the duration of the game. You have to stay within the home or the building that you're playing the game in the whole time. And I don't know if this is the most important, but I would think it's pretty up there as far as importance goes, and that is that you must not do anything to provoke the Midnight Man. So like I said, when you get those signs that he is near or something, you do not antagonize him, you do not acknowledge him, you simply leave the area. Many people say it's very important that you do not provoke him at all. And yeah, other than that, your goal is to remain untouched by him until 3.33 a.m. And then essentially he leaves your home. But like I said, always be careful because many people report him kind of always being in your life from that point going forward. So that is the game, guys. I know this is kind of a quicker one. Um, I just thought it would be a really fun one anyway. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you liked this type of um, kind of shorter video or if you like kind of the more long form ones i know some of the frightful fridays i've done have been in like the 30 to 50 minute range um just kind of depends on the topic how long it's going to be but let me know what you thought let me know if you've ever tried this game or um, if you know of anyone who has or if you've just heard of it let me know all of your thoughts in the comments below let me know what topics you would like me to discuss next i would love to have your guys input so that i'm talking about what you want to hear about and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and I love you guys so much. Bye.